I don't know if I can fit this thing in my mouth. She says that every day. Don't be a little dick. And welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another dun dun mukbang. Woo! Woo! Guys, I'm so freaking excited because today we have tried to do something again with fried chicken to make it even more insane, make it even more out of this world. This has pretty much become sums up my entire life. Do everything you can for the love of fried chicken. Risk it all, your body, your soul, for mother freaking fried chicken. And so today we have decided to be inspired by. KFC's new limited edition donut chicken fried no donut fried chicken sandwiches that they have in three cities. I think one of the cities is Los Angeles, but I've been trying to look everywhere to see is which it shop really? it is. Yeah, or like if it's like run out because sometimes if it's sold out, it doesn't show you that they have it, and so it's just it's been a struggle. This has been on my mind for like I think over. A week or two now and I saw my friends they have their own cooking channel and they did it and I was like wait I could just make my own honestly it's some donuts and it's some fried chicken from KFC so here we have KFC's donut fried chicken sandwich this is honestly them trying to make up for Popeye's crushing them in the sandwich game I'm just kidding just kidding and KFC, we still love haven't you. had those yet <laughs> I know why is everything Don't. they're selling not available right didn't you say KFC had a new thing came out too you think what is you it? think that it's a waffle fried chicken sandwich. You think that they just... Guys, I just came out with something linked in the description. My Biss merch. It's crazy. It's new. It's a surprise. And it's sold out. But why don't you go check out the website and browse all the other products? What if that's the scam? They say all these things to get their things like in the news cycle. And that's today's conspiracy. And guess what, bits? It works. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Is it really? No. Oh. Wow, these glazed donuts are from Krispy Kreme. It's my first time in, I want to say since like middle school I've had Krispy Kreme. And yeah. they are soft. They're voluptuous soft. I don't know if I can fit this thing in my mouth. She says that every day. I'm just kidding. Uh. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Can I be honest? The donut is so overpowering. Yeah, I thought I, I would love chicken. it. Is Krispy Kreme donut maybe just too strong? Very interesting. Right? I taste like a salty donut, but I don't taste like a fried chicken. Okay, I'm going to try the donut. Mm, my gosh. It's better. Mm hmm Maybe that's the limited edition. See? <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, I was going to get Dunkin' Donuts because it was so much cheaper than Krispy Kreme. Really? Mm-hmm. A dozen donuts. Krispy Kreme is $16. Dunkin' Donuts is eight-something. I should get Dunkin' Donuts because it's so much cheaper. It's half the price. But then I was like, wait, I haven't had Krispy Kreme in like since middle school, so I might as well do it today. Mm -hmm. But I think I should have gone with went with Dunkin' because the Krispy Kreme is so sweet and fluffy. You know, maybe it needs to be a little bit doughier for this sandwich to work. Who's Not the, best the donut. donut. Is it Krispy Kreme? I think nationally, but I think specialty donut shops always win me over. Like Astro Donuts and Fried Chicken in downtown LA. Fresh donuts. SK Donuts near like Beverly Grove area. Unbelievable. If you're visiting LA, I don't really recommend California Donuts in K-Town. I don't find it to be delicious. Mm -hmm. The only thing that they do is they do like pandas and like the unicorn that we had. Those look cool. Yeah, but it doesn't taste good. So I would go to SK Donuts for cronuts. They're the best at cronuts. That's such an LA thing. Mm -hmm. New Yorkers everywhere triggered. Excuse me, it's a New York thing. Oh, is it? I'm sorry. It started in New York. <laughs> yeah, the founder of Cronut started in New York, and then he opened up shop in LA later. But oh. everyone in LA started doing it before he came to LA. The da Dominic Anzel Bakery. He's the guy who started Cronut in New York. Why are you saying like Grove. I know him? At the Grove, the yellow, the yellow packaging next to La oh. Yeah, you remember. You remember. Anyway. No. <laughs> I really want to try this powdered donut really quick, though. Are we just back to donut? Whoa, what the heck? Whoa! What's in there? Like a jam? Mm-hmm. 
like a jam, honey. It's a jelly. Oh. <laughs> mm. He's like, we're jamming out to this jam today. <laughs> like, Lots of snow out right there. <laughs> okay. Very sweet. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit conflicted how I feel right now. Okay. Okay. It's good to have chicken, though. Balance it out a little bit. Yeah. I think I'm going to put this here for a second and try this like this, okay? Mmm. Wow. Mmm. Try a flavored one. What do you mean? No, you got a flavored one. Mmm. But yours look different. What is yeah. it? Is it a barbecue? Mm -hmm. yeah. Try barbecue a non-flavored one, too, to see the difference. Is that one? The chocolate? Okay. So today, I decided since I'm taking this <clears throat> risk to my health because donuts and fried chicken is always a risk, I decided we're going to talk about stories of people oh who... Oh my god, <gasps> I'm did you see that? What? Oh my god, can I have that? <laughs> oh! <gasps> I feel like these donuts are such a surprise. Mm. Every single one of them. Mm. This one's good. Well, that donut's good. Chocolatey. Yeah. Wow. Sorry, you were saying? Mm. We're going to talk about a highly dangerous job. Did you know when you watch all these Marvel movies, when you watch Iron Man, when you watch Superman, mm. that's not Marvel. Don't hate me. <laughs> when you think of these movies, you think about the joy that you experience when you watch it. You think about all the crazy action you just ingested and you feel like, damn, I want to be a superhero, right? And then you look at these people like Robert Downey Jr., Chris motherfucking Evans, Chris motherfucking... God, why do I not know their names today? I'm usually so good with all of their names. You know the other one, Thor. <laughs> but like, What's the spider's name? Tom Holland mm. is the spider, okay? I love Tom Holland. You think about all these people and you think, how can Chris Evans be so attractive and so good at acting, but also how is he so freaking good at fighting people? I feel like I would be safe in Chris Evans' arms, hands, arms, because he is Captain America. And like you just think of these things. It's almost like when you watch Grey's Anatomy too much and you're like, wow, Meredith Grey, the person who plays Meredith Grey, her name is Ellen. If I was near Ellen and I had a heart attack, she would know what to do. But in reality, she probably wouldn't. Not much better than a regular doctor because she only plays the part so, so well. Not to discredit her, but it's her character. She is an actress, not a doctor. But mm -hmm. with these superheroes, they're so good. You almost feel like they're real superheroes. If I met Chris Evans, the building burned on fire. I would expect him, I don't know, take off his shirt and just like wave it around and save all of us and we'd be like, oh my god, Captain America! Right? That's pretty much what I think in my head. Just me? <laughs> no, I think about it all the time. You think about Chris Evans saving you from the yeah. shirtless in a fire as yeah. well? And why is that? Because of all of the action that they produce on set. Mm -hmm. But did you know Hollywood's biggest, biggest, most pivotal group of people are the most least recognized, one of the least recognized. They don't even have their own division at the Oscars like the sound, costumes, tech people, right? Animation people. They don't, mm -hmm. but they risk their lives on a day daily basis and that is the life of a stepman sounds like a superman no okay so that's the life of a stepman and to be honest with you i looked up their salaries because i'm curious right and mm -hmm. when you google stepman salary don't know how accurate it is but i'm assuming it's kind of accurate they don't get paid a lot that is kind of shitty why is that Do they even get on the list in the at the end of the movie? Mm-hmm. No, oh, they are. Mm. But they're not in they're never on like And I'll tell you why, there's a reason other than oh why don't you, you know? Mm. There's an actual reason. Is so, it because it takes out the magic? Yes. That means every time I watch a movie I don't see Chris anymore. I see Yen. Why is he Chinese? Yen is not Chinese. What's Yen? I A N. I Ian <laughs> Like, you could have been like, 
I, I see Jack, I see Kevin, I see Leo, and you're like, I see Andrew Yang. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, that's who you see when you see Captain America? <laughs> Well, that got really weird. Whoa. Whoa. That was pretty good, though. <laughs> that was honestly really good. I feel like he should hire me for his, like, marketing or something. <laughs> they get paid, on average, about $70,000 a year, which you're thinking $70,000 a year? How many people make $70,000 a year? That sounds like a good plan, right? But you have to realize that the life of a stuntman is worse than the life of a police officer because not only do they face death in the face at work every day, but police officers, some days you don't get injured, right? Right? Some mm -hmm. days, it's it's a nice day. No crime to fight. You're just cruising around, giving away parking tickets. Sorry, I'm aggressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a lot of parking tickets. But with stuntmen, almost always you get injured. And if you're not getting injured that day, you're usually on set with three or four existing injuries, right? Mm -hmm. And you just have to push through it because it is a highly competitive, tight-knit community. They're not represented by agents. They're represented by what's called stunt coordinators. So every action movie or any movie that needs stuntmen, they hire a stunt coordinator and that person just picks whatever stuntmen they want, right? So it's highly, highly, highly competitive, mainly because it's really just based on physical vigor. It's not based on the way you look or the way you talk. So they're not looking for, oh, you know, five, two Asian female that eats donuts and fried chicken and talks really loudly, right? They're just looking for five foot three female who can jump off a building Damn. so it's very very just physical insanely competitive and it's a rough environment and the lowest paid depending on not being able to get to work i mean some make like five thousand dollars and the highest paid ones some of the top top build hollywood stuntmen mm -hmm. that are on like marvel movies that are doing all the superhero actions you yeah. mean batman stuntmen stunt doubles right i can only imagine how much their like medical insurance costs out of that right but the highest paid ones in hollywood are around a quarter million dollars a year but again these people are getting paid that money because they're probably jumping off like 200 foot buildings into a giant airbag while being lit on fire That's so crazy. right so it's a very intense environment okay yeah. and you have to practice these stunts yeah. mm. oh my gosh i love this one yeah. strawberry is my favorite that's crazy mm. So do people think they deserve to be paid more? Mm hmm. Or is it just, it is how it is? It is what it is, right? You know? Technically, they're not the only ones that risk their lives in movie sets. A lot of cameramen have died. Cameramen for action movies is a whole nother story. If you guys want a whole video on that, because when you see a shot of Batman in his Batmobile mm -hmm. getting up onto the car mm -hmm. while it's driving, that's a stunt man. But how do you think they're getting that shot? Because there's a car right next to it with a cameraman holding a heavy ass filming camera, sticking his body out of the car to mm -hmm. get the shot steady. Mm -hmm. They risked their lives. There you actually was a cameraman who died on the Batman Dark Knight Rises set, which there's a whole curse behind the Batman series with Christopher Nolan. Yeah, a lot of deaths. Well, obviously, I don't want to talk about that part. That's not a curse. That's a very, very dumb person. The movie theater. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people involved like actually involved in the movie there was a lot of passing and a lot of incidents you, you know obviously the most major one being Heath Ledger and like there's just been so many accidents yeah so it's just the whole thing that's like a whole video of talking about it right and so you think about all these people that risk their lives and stuntmen are definitely one of the top ones of movie industries because I mean they're doing all of the stunts <coughs> and these stunts you know I thought they were all CGI I thought these days 2019 there shouldn't be stuntmen not that I want to put them out of a job but I thought hey why risk a life or a leg or an injury when you can just probably just like do something on like Final Cut Pro <laughs> okay I'm just kidding no you can okay learn it from Stephanie <laughs> <laughs> I have a tutorial on Final Cut Pro. And so I thought it was CGI, but it's not. So when you see people, and in particular, like the Harry Potter movies, when you see like an explosion happen, mm -hmm. and you see these people getting whipped back because of the explosion, mm -hmm. I genuinely thought that these were CGI'd, right? Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, the explosion is. But most of the people flying backwards, they're not being CGI'd. They're getting pulled. By a wire. Mm. 
And one of them on the Harry Potter set actually ended up being paralyzed from the neck down because of one of those stunts. So I'm going to bring you into the world of stuntmen. So the first one that I was talking about was the Harry Potter one. And this one is a short one because there's not a lot of information on it, right? One of the most, there are different varying levels of dangerous franchises, right? And Mm -hmm. so from what I've read, the most dangerous seems to be obviously all the superhero movies because they want action, 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 and they want less CGI because there's just a difference. They said there's something just different like even if you've never seen someone do a triple backflip off the empire state building when you see it cgi you're like huh right yeah something's off and so these movies put a lot of time in making sure that these stuntmen do it Mm -hmm. and so some of the deadliest like series of movies have been honestly though when you say they only get paid 70 grand or 100 grand a year it sounds like cheaper to have somebody the stuntman to do it versus (laughs) CGI. A bunch of you are doing CGI. Because how much did Game of Thrones spend on CGI a episode? I heard it was like hundreds of thousands or something so nuts. Dragons, man. Yeah, it's so it's fucking dragon. They're a money hole, not a financially good decision. I'm just kidding. Harry Potter has not been one of the deadliest. I think the deadliest is Resident Evil series, the Dark Knight series of Batman. Um, Resident Evil? The Resident Evil series. You know which one that is? Yeah. It's like the vampire Yeah, my sister was obsessed with it. I I grew up watching Resident Evil, but I don't know the plot of it. I just know that she was so freaking pretty. You know why she looks pretty? Why? Because everybody's a zombie next to her. (gasps) Oh my gosh. I'm just kidding. Me as a bride. I'm like, (laughs) bridesmaids! More blood! (laughs) Just pour zombie effects on them. Resident Evil series is known to be one of the most dangerous ones. Um, A woman recently died on Deadpool 2. And there's just have been so much stunt performers. Like I was saying, a lot of people think that you just need an adrenaline rush. And that's what I thought. When I started reading about stuntmen, I'm like, these people are adrenaline junkies. It's not. A lot of the stuntmen, you can't just be an adrenaline junkie. You can't just be a bodybuilder. Actually, being a bodybuilder is harder for you to get into the stunt business Mm -hmm. because they want an average body. You can't replace Robert Downey Jr. with some dude who's pumping iron and looks more like Arnold Schwarzenegger to be like, hey, you're just going to pretend to be him in this fight scene and so you need to have like a very generic body that's very similar to the actors and actresses in Hollywood Mm -hmm. which is another thing I didn't realize but this woman stunt woman from Canada was complaining not complaining but she was mentioning that the one thing that people don't realize of her job is that actresses Mm -hmm. are usually like a size double zero Mm-hmm. Right, and in order for her to get roles to be stunt doubles for these actresses, she, gotta she always got to be a size double zero, mm. which is so difficult to maintain while you're working out and making sure you're physically good. You know, it's just so much. They said that most of the stuntmen they have background professions. They come from professions of mainly being, you know, the obvious, which is motocross and race car drivers, right? Professional ones, or you have gymnasts, circus performers, and dancers. Because a lot of people say being a stuntman, most of the scenes obviously you have the high paid action movies where you're jumping through buildings and all of that Mm -hmm. but most of stuntmen get their work in fight scenes Mm -hmm. and so all of that is just rhythm rhythm yes which you don't have any of. Yeah, and so stuntmen, a lot of them actually come from like a dance or choreography background Mm. instead of like martial arts. Oh, there's a lot of martial arts background too, but choreography is very important. And that's why they said Chris Evans was so good in Captain America Mm -hmm. because he has a dance background. And so Chris Evans stuntman. No, no, Chris Evans. Himself. He would do some of the fight scenes and he was really good uh-huh. because he comes from a dance background. And so he was on beat with all the punches to make it look very realistic. Mm. Right? And so there's just like this whole background information to all of it, right? Let's talk about one of the most infamous series, which is the Resident Evil series. And this one is infamous because of it had one of the most gruesome, grotesque <laughs> stuntman injuries I have read about to this date. It's so bad. And this is Olivia Jackson. Now, Olivia Jackson is one of the most higher top performing stunt women in the industry at the time. Is she playing the, the girl? Yes, okay. the main character, Alice, in the movie. And she actually was a stunt woman for Charlize Theron. I always get her name wrong for Mad Max Fury Road. So oh. she is a high paid, well known, also very beautiful. She looks like a celebrity. I think, Tyler, stop looking. I think at one point she was like a model and stuff, right? And she just loves doing stunts. Now, at this point in time she was living in the UK and stunt women they're not really represented like I said by agencies she was also in the Avengers as Elizabeth Olsen stunt double so she's a stunt double for a lot of a 
A-list celebrities. And so this is recent then. This is um maybe like five years ago. Yeah, so it's mm. pretty recent. And so she decided that she was gonna take some time off because she just got casted to be a Wonder Woman stunt. And I don't think she Whoa. was gonna be Gal Gadot stunt double. I think she was gonna be um. Like actually in the movie, so she got casted to be in that, and she was just waiting for that time to come because when you're working in an industry like this, even as an actress, it's just you're waiting for your set to come, right? Mm -hmm. And so she was just kind of hanging out, and she got approached by a stunt coordinator that she's worked with previously, and they said, "Hey, listen, you know, we j we are we're working on Resident Evil and the stunt double. Like she pulled out, we need a stunt double ASAP, right?" Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing is, they were filming in South Africa. Okay, this gets kind of pertinent to the story in a little bit. So they're filming in South Africa, and she goes, "Listen, I don't think I want to take the job, especially because when you do wages in South Africa, even though I'm from the UK, you're not going to pay me UK wages as if I was performing in Canada, the US, or the." UK, so no, I don't want to do it. So and they said, pay less? "Yeah, they're wow. just paying the crew less, right? Because they can also find a lot more crew in South Africa that are getting paid less." Mm. Unfortunately, that's why a lot of these businesses they try to film like outside in other countries, and that's why like even in the U.S., like Georgia is such a filming hub because they give Cheaper. a lot of tax cuts for these filming industries. Oh. They're like, "Oh, film here, and we'll, you know." So she's like, I don't want to do it. And this is very pertinent to the story. And they said, okay, we're going to give you a little bit of a raise, right? And mm -hmm. now because this is a billion dollar franchise, you're not talking about a new movie, a new startup, not backed by massive producers and production companies. You're talking about a Paul Anderson film. He's the director, right? And producer, mm -hmm. I believe. And so you're talking about a massive, massive film with money, money, okay? They made over a billion dollars from this franchise. And so she said, okay, this is very pertinent for stunt people because a lot of them have their own own medical insurance but they heavily rely on the insurances that these production sets take on because yeah. these productions need to be insured if something breaks if someone dies the insurance company pays out and so she's thinking well obviously they're gonna have you know awesome insurance because you know usually Paul Anderson films Sony backed films they do and so she says okay fine she goes to South Africa and this was I believe her first full day on set and it was a rainy day that day and it was just a shit show now Olivia Jackson she shows up to set and she She's thinking that she's going to be um, doing a fight scene today, right? That was what was on the schedule. She comes in and Paul Anderson looks at her and goes, okay, that fight scene, not happening. We're doing something else today, right? And mm -hmm. mind you, it was a rainy day. The rest of the crew, they're all in boots and a lot of them thought that they were going to take today off because it was that bad weather conditions, okay? Mm -hmm. To be even filming, shooting, anything, right? And they go, we're actually going to do a motorcycle scene, a crazy high precision motorcycle scene right now. And she goes, what? Right? And so this motorcycle scene is so scary. Oh my gosh. She did a, she does ride motorcycle, right? In the mm -hmm. movie, so. Mm -hmm. So what they do is she can't wear a helmet. She can't wear an earpiece. So the reason that you want these people to look generic although I think Olivia Jackson is beautiful and not generic in any way. But you know how some people have very distinct fiction? Fi yeah. They don't want that, right? Because what they do is you get Olivia Jackson on a motorcycle. Everything pretty much stays the same. Like her hair is pretty much staying the same, you mm -hmm. know? But they just change the face to the main actress. Yeah. So the body movements still look like a real human because it is a real human performing the stunts, right? And so like deep fate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the reason that she wasn't allowed to wear an earpiece that becomes pertinent to the story. So this is the Air way- Earpiece for them to communicate yes, with him? Yes, with her? the crew. So a lot of the stunt people, typically they're always wearing an earpiece, especially when they're performing high precision stunts, such as a car hit, which is a type of stunt where stuntmen actually get hit by cars. A car hit and things like that. These are, or like wires, those are very dangerous because it's, it's not just you, but it's machinery, right? Mm. And that's why someone became paralyzed on the Harry Potter set. Essentially, she's like, okay, what, what are we doing today, right? And they said, you're gonna get on this motorcycle, no helmet, no, you know, nothing covering this or protecting your face and no earpiece because we don't want anything in your ear and you're gonna go about 50 miles an hour in this wet and rainy terrain and you're gonna go beeline. And this is the craziest part. 
like you know when you're driving and you see something in front of you your instinct is to stop right mm -hmm. you can't stop as a stunt woman because you're depending on them to lift the camera up so you can zoom through so imagine it like this she starts here on a motorcycle rainy day no headgear right she goes 50 miles straight <laughs> shot there's a camera here uh -huh. and these filming cameras listen they have this crazy just arms everywhere this rigs gigs everywhere and she has to drive 50 miles an hour on a mm -hmm. motorcycle straight to that mm -hmm. they press a button and that shoots up mm -hmm. and then it gets her underneath that's how mm -hmm. you get the scene of it going straight to you and you see it on the screen oh my god and then it shows over that's so her crazy yeah i thought they just cgi yeah or something like that that's what i thought too like some sort of like technical stuff no mm. she literally has to drive 50 miles an hour straight towards the camera and so they practice the stunt twice right mm -hmm. and everything goes smoothly they press the button and they so what they do when you're a stunt person is a lot of timing mm -hmm. so they just have to get the timing right and she was saying like technically statistically as long as you get the timing right the first couple of times nothing's going to change as long as you don't change anything you don't mm -hmm. go faster they press it at the same time Mm -hmm. Now, the worst part is Olivia Jackson was never involved in any of the key safety meetings that the stunt coordinator had with the producers on the set of Resident Evil, which she didn't feel comfortable with, but whatever. There's a lot of stunt people involved. They can't all be in the meeting, right? Mm -hmm. And so she's like, okay, it'll be fine. I didn't know I was filming this, but it's fine, right? So she gets onto the motorcycle, does it twice. It works really well. What she didn't know was that Paul Anderson and the other producers behind the camera were not happy with it. They weren't happy with the shot, not because of Olivia Jackson, but they wanted a tighter shot. They wanted to see her closer to the camera oh before they lift it. They wanted something so epic, just oof, that shot, right? And so without telling her, they delayed the button presser one second. They said press it one second later. So they did that because they want her without her knowing that she yeah. actually comes super close. Yeah. But then they never, did they not calculate they the time? They did not tell her. And they, I guess they didn't calculate the time. Something happened where whatever they decided to do on their end, they lifted it and it made impact with her. So she didn't crash fully into it head on, but it was lifting while she oh. had impact, which was probably worse because it was in movement. And then what happened? And so the camera arm ripped and obliterated her arm, oh. bones, all of it. And there is something called degloving of your face that's like the medical jargon for it it's it's exactly how it sounds her cheek flesh was ripped all the way back so her teeth were all exposed i'm so sorry no i know i know it's, it's like, making my knees weak but because that's so crazy because that's what the movie is about they actually do that to humans yeah. and to it and it happened to olivia jackson because they wanted a tighter shot. So she's rushed to the hospital. Now, this was another thing that a lot of people were upset about, including Olivia Jackson and her friends and family, and rightfully so, right? It was just uncomfortable because, I'd like again, people don't want to say, it's not the country's fault at all. Obviously not. And I think there's a lot being done in a lot of different countries that don't have the same medical care yeah. as the United States or the UK or places like that. But they're saying that, you know, the hospital in South Africa did the best that they could. Yeah. But Olivia's family probably wanted her, you know, in the UK at a UK hospital, right? And she was in a coma for like three weeks and she had her entire arm amputated to oh here. Oh my God. Yeah. Her, her career's... As a stunt woman, her entire arm was amputated. She had to get facial surgery over and over again. And during her three-week coma, I didn't know this because I haven't really read a lot of people talking about being in a coma in their experience, but she was saying that it's not just sleeping. You think it's a three-week nap. You think you wake up and in those movies, you're like, where am I? No. She said she knew where she was. And during those three weeks, because it's almost like a medically induced coma, the types of dreams you have... It's just nightmare after nightmare because of the pain you feel physically and your brain is like trying to understand it so and your brain in and out of nightmares and the last memory you have is usually of the traumatic crash <sighs> and so it was just repeats of that crash for three weeks while she was in a coma and she said she almost physically and mentally was just gone. And so during this time, her husband came, her family came, and, you know, Paul Anderson and all of the producers were like, oh, yeah, don't worry. Like, don't worry about the medical expenses. Just worry on getting better because, obviously, you're going to get paid all the medical, like, expenses through our insurance. So she was in the hospital, and she's getting all these medical treatments, arm amputation, facial reconstruction surgery. These are not cheap procedures. Getting an x-ray is a bajillion dollars these days, right? And so it's just not cheap. And so they had paid her out. 
$33,000 because they had got insurance through multiple shell companies in South Africa. They weren't insured oh properly. Gosh. Whereas if you were to do this in the US or in Canada, these insurance companies would be like, no, you're no. not. I don't think so. I know what movie you're filming. <laughs> don't I be see. a little dick. You know, whereas in South Africa, it's very lenient. And that's why a lot of people choose to film there. And so the medical insurance was supposed to be $33,000 per person, which is nothing. Her family starts freaking out, you know, and worse on top of that, it's like, obviously, you're not going to let your family member die. But then you also, how can you take on all of this debt of hundreds and thousands of dollars? You know, a lot of bankers won't even give it to you. A lot of loans won't do it. No one will do it, right? But also, they're realizing Olivia Jackson was one of the higher paid stunt women. And what else is she going to do now? You know, just the rehab of like getting used to only having one arm, you know, all of that. Plus, what's her career now? She bet her whole life on this. And so thankfully, being friends with, you know, Charlize Theron and, you know, the, the woman that was playing Alice in Resident Evil, and she had a lot of A-list friends. They did start some sort of, like, um, raising money. Uh -huh. I think a total of $100,000 was raised. Nice. $20,000 was donated by Paul Anderson himself. So that was still <laughs> nothing. So first of all, that doesn't even touch her medical bills. What and was something, her bill? I mean, it was nuts, I believe. And something like this, that the reason that you can't really see medical bills is because... It's not just, hey, we're gonna amputate your arm. It's, hey, you're gonna have physical therapy. Hey, you gotta come back every single, however many months for checkups and this yeah. and that and this. It's a lifelong process of medical bills, right? And so they just gave her $100,000. And then she did say that Sony, and I don't know if it was Sony, but the movie producers, they all try to settle with her for an undisclosed amount, and it was stupid low. It wouldn't even cover the medical expenses of that time. And she had to settle? No, and she was like, no way. Okay. And so now she's suing them. Mm -hmm. She's suing the, all the producers, I believe, the mm -hmm. Resident Evil franchise. I don't mm -hmm. think she's suing Sony because I think this was outsourced production. And so she's suing all of the production companies involved, and it's just so fucking shady. This is ongoing right now. Yeah. As of like September, I think she's legally like suing them actively and talking about it and trying to get press on it because you know these days press helps a lot for these types of cases. It's not caused by herself, no. right? No, this one is truly not caused by herself. It was caused by the fact that they didn't tell her a critical change. And a lot of people, like she had professionals do the math and it, one second going at that speed was like 150 feet diff difference, which is huge. Yeah. You know, it's not just like, oh, one second. You know, 150 it's like, feet? Yeah, at that speed or something like that. That was what they were saying like on the legal lawsuit. Holy I mean, it's just cow. insane that they didn't tell her these things. She didn't have an earpiece to communicate with the mm -hmm. crew and you cannot make changes without the because they're putting their lives in your hands mm -hmm. you know how does that make sense it wasn't a machinery fuck up it wasn't anything like that you literally wanted a better shot did the movie come out yeah the movie came out oh my god yeah and the movie made like i think 300 million dollars just that one movie but the whole franchise made over a billion dollars and that's just the movie. I'm sure there's like merchandising, licensing stuff that was done. She's also suing them because, hey, first of all, it's not just medical expenses, but I had a really amazing career. So you have to think about, okay, fine. Yeah. Well, why do you even want to be a stunt woman? Why don't you do something else, right? Yeah. But to be realistic, I don't really know Olivia Jackson's life story, but can she go from being an established stunt woman making, I don't know, maybe she was making a quarter million dollars a year yeah. to getting a desk job and maintaining that lifestyle. That's I mean, not fair. I mean, the fact that you lost your arm and your face Yeah, I mean, but during your job. Yeah, but we're also itself. talking about, yeah, like the after effects because people are saying, well, then you probably shouldn't have been a stunt woman. You know the risk. Yeah. Just get a job, right? You could say that, but you can't really say that because that she matter, cultivated yeah. that skill. Mm -hmm. That's her skill set and they took it away from exactly. her. Exactly. You know, so it's not her fault. She's suing them for loss of monetary wages, obviously, which I agree with. Um, there's actually a lot more. God, the time is running out. Yeah. Like when this movie went, went, came out, yeah. nobody ever talked about her. Right? Not really. Not wow. really. And the crazy thing is about a week or two after she um, was in the hospital in a coma, another person on set died. What and that person wasn't a stuntman. That person was a crew member. I don't know what part of the crew he was in, but there was a USA Army-issued Hummer. 
mm-hmm. right? That was mm-hmm. given to Resident Evil or bought, right? And so Resident Evil, they put it on this rotating platform because yeah. I don't think they actually wanted to drive it or for whatever reason. And on that rotating platform, they're in it, they're CGI in the background, green yeah. screens, and you have the cameras in. But that Hummer was not properly secured and the rotating platform was rotating and it slid off. A crew member was standing here because that was supposed to be, oh, you know, goodness. stuck to the rotating platform. It slid off and crushed him up against the wall. And he died about a couple of weeks after. Mm-hmm. Because Do you know, well, other than his movie, family, nobody in the U.S. knew about his death until weeks after. After the movie was released? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then 16 zombies were sent to the hospital. 16 zombies. This one it has a slightly comical effect to it, okay? This one was for a different movie, Resident Evil. Different movie, though. Same franchise. Same director, I believe. In Canada, though. They were shooting in Canada. They had 16 zombies. One platform, right? Is going to reach another platform. They all zombie it over to this platform. And this one is gone. Now they're all on this platform. It's like a video game. Like but this the, platform... The they were on? Yeah. Okay. But this platform decided to leave before it was fully connected. And so yeah. there came a gap that... All these 16 zombies fell through, right? They fell between the caps of the platforms. And uh, one of the crew members, not funny, but funny, because he said none of them were critically injured. None of them had life-threatening injuries, thank God. But when they called the Canadian EMTs, the Canadian EMTs and the, you know, the medical people, they show up. And these zombies, I mean, they're covered in blood. And most of it is special effects blood, right? Oh, okay. And they're all looking at each other going, holy fucking shit. Because they think that this is real blood and all of them are like just limbs torn apart, shirts ripped. And they're like, what is going on? And then they were like, oh, okay. A lot of this is just movie effects. And they were like, okay. And so they said it took a really long time to even address their injuries because they were having a hard time seeing, okay, is this movie blood or is this your blood? Because is if this it's- your arm or this is... Movie arm. Who's missing an arm? <laughs> because, like, imagine, like, you can't just be like, that looks like movie blood, and just, like, wipe it away, and, and it's then, like, they're real blood. And, and all the makeup artists on the side that, yep, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> makeup artists be, like, taking pictures, like, she did it, so, like, yeah. <laughs> so, is there people out there talking about stunt people that deserves more? It's a very interesting thing, right? Because you have stunt people who feel both ways about it. Now, most of the industry, and I think that's why Brie Larson was actually praised by industry people for bringing her stunt doubles up onto um, the stage with her. I believe that's what she did, but she brought all her stunt doubles, right? And Mm -hmm. to the average person, me, I'm like, okay, I mean, I love it, but I don't really get it, right? But now I get it, now that I understand Mm -hmm. what they go through. And so the industry loved her for doing that. Whereas you have half the industry that's like, But that's movie making magic. That's the magic. And you're taking away the magic, you know? But then at the same time, you know, yeah, it's a movie making magic. But yeah, like, thank you. Thanks to my producer. Mm -hmm. Thanks to my mother. My idea is I think that they should have an Oscars They deserve some credit, right? Well, I think that they deserve credit, recognition, Mm -hmm. obviously better working conditions and all of that. Mm -hmm. But I do think that they deserve, like, a lot of people think that they deserve an Oscars. You think this is like a touchy subject in Hollywood? Probably. Because think about it, right? When Mm -hmm. you think about taking movie magic out, technically, costume design is movie magic. Special effects, those are movie magic. But those all have categories at the Oscars, at the Academy Awards. But why don't stunt people who risk their lives? No offense, I think costume designers, amazing. You probably do risk your life at one point, but you don't do it so every day in the Mm -hmm. face of death like stunt people do. Yeah. You know, and I'm not like diminishing their craft, but that's like, why don't we celebrate them more? All of a sudden, actor, I just watched this video. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Sees my next video. Oh God, I hate her. <laughs> Unsubscribe. But that's just me and more recognition. But obviously before that, better working conditions, better insurance, probably better pay. I mean, I wish I could go on more because there's so many instances of people, a lot of some people dying on set or amputating limbs. At the Avengers movie, one of the top paid stunt dudes, Mm -hmm. he had a part of his scalp ripped off, but he still kept filming. You also have instances of celebrities who are like, I'm going to do my own stunts, and they almost died. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this one, and if you guys want to hear more, let me know in the comments, and I love you guys so, so much. And also, what do you think about stuntmen? Do you think it takes the magic out? Like, I genuinely want to know. Maybe if I was younger, I might think it took the magic out. Let me know if you guys would ever get the KFC donut sandwich. If they come out nationwide, would you get it? I love you guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.